There are a lot of programs to go and set your wallpaper on Linux, and in many cases, it's going to be built into your image viewer, like if you're using, say, Fair. But what I've noticed is that a lot of these programs to set your wallpaper have a lot of functionality that I just don't care about. If I want to go and edit my image, I'm going to go and edit it inside of an image editor. So say I want to change like the background color because there was going to be some black borders. I'm going to go and do that in an image editor where I'm going to have much more control and be able to do exactly what I want to do. I don't need that in my wallpaper setter. So in my case, I'm just using X wallpaper and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to be doing everything in this floating window here just because it's going to make it a bit easier to see any of the changes I actually make. So Unlike a lot of wallpaper settings, you can't go and just run X wallpaper and then pass in an image. So say, for example, my wall.png file. This won't actually work. You actually need to specify what you want to do to the image. So even though, say, like, fair, you can actually go and set a wallpaper like that, it is still doing some sort of processing, whether it's doing centering or stretching or tiling, it's doing something to it. So in X wallpaper's case, you always have to be explicit about what you want to do to the image. But you could always just go and alias the one option you actually care about and then use it like that. So the first option we're going to look at is centering. So centering is a fairly simple one. What it's going to do is find the center of the image. So in this case, it's going to be right here. Stick that in the center of the screen and then show whatever can be seen from that point with your resolution without actually resizing the image. So if your image is, say, 10,000 by 10,000 pixels and you have a 1920 by 1080 screen, you're not actually going to see the entire image. You're just going to see a 1920 by 1080 box cut out from the center. Now, let's say instead your image is smaller than the resolution. So once again, it's not going to go and actually resize the image. But now you're actually going to have some black borders around it. So let's use this one right here and this image right here. And as we can see, the image is still placed in the center. But we have black borders around every border where the image doesn't actually reach the end of the screen. Now we have two options which when you read the description they sound very similar and if the image actually takes up the entire screen anyway do actually act in a very similar way and those are zoom and maximize. So the main difference between zoom and maximize is whether they crop. So if we run x wallpaper dash dash maximize maximize on this image that we were just using it on so pictures stallman dash l dot jpeg as we're going to see it actually resizes the image this time, but it doesn't resize the image so much that it gets rid of all of the black borders. So it hasn't actually cropped the image. I know it does look like some of the image is cut off, but my monitor does go above my status bar here. So this is actually the edge of the image and there is literally no cropping happening whatsoever. So the difference between this and Zoom is that Zoom actually will crop stuff. So I prefer to use Zoom most of the time because I don't like having black borders on my images. So if we just go and resize it with this one, as we can see, now we have no black borders and it is cropping the image. Now really the only bit of image editing this comes with is trimming, which lets you select a quadrant of the image and then set that as the wallpaper. Now, personally, I wouldn't really want to do this in a command line application like this. I'd much rather do it in something like GIMP, but it is here if you want to do it. So the way we do this is dash dash trim, and you've probably seen this syntax before, so it goes width let's say 200 by the height, 300 plus the X, or we can do minus, but we're going to do plus in this case. So plus, let's say 50, and then let's say plus 40 for the Y. So it's going to start at the coordinate 50 by 40, and it's going to be an image that's 200 by 300 pixels. And you also have to go and set how you want to actually scale the image. So in this case, we're going to do zoom, but I'll show you what it looks like with the other ones we've seen before. So if we do zoom, it looks something like this. I didn't actually select these numbers beforehand. I'm seeing this for the first time now. And if we do maximize, it's going to look a little bit like this right here. Now, you probably notice a bit of an issue here. So, yes, it is actually trimming the image, but it's also doing something else as well. It's using the offset we set in here to actually go and move the image, but it's not moving it by 50 and 40. What it's doing is moving the image and then actually changing the scale, which is also changing the scale of how much has actually been moved. So if we go and do center instead, what that's going to do is actually put the image in the center of the screen, use the offset we set, but not actually mess around with the scale of anything. So this actually is offset by 50 and 40. So I don't exactly know why it messes with the offset like that. It does make it a bit more confusing to actually use. Once again, this is why I would recommend just going and editing the image and then setting it with something like, say, maximize or zoom and having it be exactly how it's supposed to look. 
Now, there are other ways to scale an image, but the reason why I didn't mention them until now is because I would never actually consider using them. So, the first one we have is Stretch. So stretch is not actually going to maintain the aspect ratio. So when you do zoom, it will crop the image, but it won't actually change how the image actually looks. In the case of stretch though, <laughs> in the case of stretch though, we get this right here. Now I don't know why you'd ever actually want to use this. Obviously in the case of this image, it was a very extreme example. If it's just, you know, slightly off, like it's 19, 15 by 1060 or something it's not really going to be that noticeable but in that case you might as well just do a zoom anyway and lose a little bit of detail just so you can actually maintain the aspect ratio now another one that i would never see myself using but i know that some people seem to like for some reason i don't know if it's a joke or anything or they actually legitimately like it is running tile so tile is basically going to maintain the aspect ratio of the image. It's not going to resize it or anything. It's just going to place the image as many times as it needs to to actually fill up the entire screen space. Now, if you run tile and the image you're using happens to take up the entire screen space, what it's actually going to do is place the image starting from the top left-hand corner. So let's actually set this image right here. So this is the top left of the image. If we go and set the center instead, as we're going to see, this is going to be a different location, not that one, this one right here, center. As we can see, this is the center of the image, and then that one right there was the top left. Now, if you're following along with me and you have multiple monitors, what you would have noticed is that every single time you ran a command, it was actually going and setting the wallpaper on all of your monitors. So a lot of other wallpaper setters, they kind of assume that you want different wallpapers on each of your monitors. In my case, I don't actually do that. I just want the same consistent look everywhere. So having that as the default option honestly makes it a bit easier for me. But that doesn't mean that we're limited to only doing that. So first we need to go and work out what each of our adapters are actually called. So if we go and run a program like say xrender, which is available in the xorg-xrender package, this will actually list out information about all of our displays. So we don't really care about most of the stuff in here. What we care about are these names. So displayport-0, displayport-1, displayport-2, and hdmi-a-0. They're probably going to be named differently on your system. If you have a laptop, it'll probably be something like EDP-1. And anything that has resolutions listed under it is something that is currently connected. So in my case, I have three monitors connected. My main monitor is displayport-0. Displayport-1 is my second monitor. And then HDMI-A-0 is my third monitor, which is behind my main monitor. So if we go and run X wallpaper, dash dash output, and then pass in the name of the output we want to use. So let's say displayport dash zero, and let's set the wallpaper that we are currently using. So dash dash zoom, and then wall dot PNG. Now you can't actually see it, but all of my other monitors have now had their wallpapers go black. So if you don't actually set a wallpaper for a display, it's going to be reset whenever you run a command like this. I can demonstrate that by running the same command, but this time going and running it on my second monitor. So this time my second monitor has the wallpaper, but now this one has a black screen. So you can go and chain together these output commands. You just go and add an extra output argument to it. So dash dash output, and then let's say display port dash zero, and then we're going to do dash dash center, and then let's use the Stallman image we had before. So stallman.jpg. And this time, my main monitor has the Stallman image on it. And then my second monitor has my regular wallpaper on it. Now, there's one other way we can go and set a wallpaper. So I said earlier that it processes every single one of your monitors. But what it also does is processes every single one of your screens. So if you don't know, inside of Xorg, whenever you connect a new monitor, it actually adds your monitor into a big virtual screen. So if we scroll up a bit, my, uh, my mouse wheel doesn't work properly. As you can see, screen zero currently has a resolution of 5760 by 1080. And that's because it thinks that all of my monitors are placed next to each other. So 1920 by 3 is 5760 so most systems are probably just going to have this single screen unless you go and explicitly make another one x isn't actually going to make another one for you so if you do want to go and modify a specific screen though you can actually go and specify the screen number and then you can do something like say i don't know zoom and that's going to set the image just for that screen on my system though because i only have the single screen this is effectively the same as leaving the option out 
Now, I lied. There is one more way to set a wallpaper, and that is with the dash, dash, no, dash, R, and R option. And what this is going to do is instead of setting the wallpaper to each of the individual monitors, what it's going to do is set it to the screen itself. So what I mean by this is if we use zoom, it's going to zoom in on the image enough so that we can actually fit it across every single one of my monitors. So if I had monitors that were technically above the monitor, then it would stretch it upwards. If they were below, it would stretch it downwards, so on and so forth. Now, I would only ever want to use this if I specifically had a wallpaper made to actually do this. I wouldn't want to just use this for a regular wallpaper. Maybe it would be fine with a pattern, but for anything else, it would look pretty weird. Now, there is one more interesting command to mention. That is the dash dash daemon options. What this is going to do is keep X wallpaper actually running in the background. And then every time you disconnect and reconnect a monitor, it will actually rerun the command to make sure your wallpapers actually get set properly. But... I don't really see much of a point in actually running this all the time because what you can do is every time that you run something like X Render, then you can actually just rerun X Wallpaper and not really have to worry about wasting resources on running the daemon mode. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this. Now, I may do a video on another application called HSET Root because people keep telling me about this. They say it's even more minimal than X Wallpaper. And in the case of a wallpaper setter, I want it to be as minimal as possible. If I want to do any editing, I'll just do it myself. I don't need a program like this to actually do it for me. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Monster, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter Lee, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go and support, I've worked on the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.